To make that kind of cooperation more convenient, we can use a thread instead of a process. So a thread is like a process in that it's independent to a large degree. It has its own stack, it has its own registers, and its own control flow, but they share the same address, virtual address space, which means they share static variables and file descriptors and so on. Uh, and that means the sharing uh, makes it easier to communicate become, among threads. They can all just increment the same uh, global variable total, total to keep track of how many bytes have been sent to the echo server, for example. You may remember we drew a picture like this for processes. So the model of processes from the programmer's perspective, it's that the uh, processes are independent. It's as if they have their own copy of memory with the heap code and stack, uh, and they have their own CPU. So threads offer a generalization of this illusion, and that every process still has its own memory, but each thread has its own CPU. Each thread also has its own stack, but different threads share the rest of memory, uh, heap and code. In fact, they share the same virtual address space, so that means these two different stacks, they must live at different addresses. Uh, in this case, this process has three threads, so it needs three different stacks, each at its own address. Um, and that's necessary, again, so that the threads can share the address space, so that they can share um, the same static variables, the same global variables in the heap here. A consequence of this is that the mechanism for creating a thread is going to be different from the mechanism for creating a process. When cre we created a process, we could use fork, and it made sense to make a copy of the whole virtual memory space. Conceptually, of course, we know it's done efficiently with copy on write uh, through virtual memory. Um, and uh, since we made those copies, then the different processes could continue using the stack in different ways. But with, uh, with threads, since uh, each thread needs a different stack, uh, all of the addresses on the stack have to be different, it doesn't make sense to fork a thread in the same way a fork a process and have thread come back twice. Um, pthread create then is going to work a different way so that we uh, start a new stack and start a new function in that new stack. The API for p create is um, that instead of having it return twice, it's always going to return just once with an error code or not. And when it returns, it's always in the thread that was was calling p create. Meanwhile, p create starts a new thread, uh, creates a new stack, and starts calling this start function in that new thread. And as it calls start function, it passes along this argument. So this makes it easy to start a particular function with a particular argument that's specific to that thread. This, uh, this thread argument here that's uh, going to be filled in with uh, a thread identifier um, and the attributes arguments we won't really talk about. We just set it to null to, to mean the default attributes of a thread.